Hey, this is Leo for Actualized.org. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about how to stop watching TV. Television. 10 years ago, if you would have asked me to shoot the video that I'm about to shoot, what you're about to watch about television, it would have blown my mind because where I was then compared to where I am now is so radically different. And my views on television have really changed a lot. This video, even though it might sound like it's something very simple and very obvious, you might have heard it many, many times before, don't dismiss what this video is going to show you. Because if you watch television, the way that most Americans watch television nowadays, which is multiple hours per day, multiple week, uh, days per week, accumulating up to five to 10 to 15 hours of TV time per week, then actually this video right here might be the single biggest personal development gain that you can make in your life just by changing this one thing and stopping to watch TV. I wanna go into some of the details here about uh, the challenges with TV, and I also want to make some finer distinctions between what kind of TV, TV is okay and what kind is not okay. So let's crack into all that. Television is destroying your life. Pretty simple, pretty simple statement. And this is not a statement that I would have agree, uh, agreed with 10 years ago because I was so immersed in television. I loved my movies, I loved my video games, I love my, my TV shows, I love my Discovery Channel, my History Channel, I love my TV news and watching all the politics and all the election cycle news, all of that stuff. I was very much immersed in it. Not only that, but in my own mind, I was telling myself that this is actually a, a positive thing. Because I knew back then that people were espousing theories about why TV is bad for you, but I actually had counter theories to that in my mind, and I was saying, actually, TV is making me more worldly. I'm seeing things on TV, I'm learning stuff from the stuff that I see on TV that I wouldn't have otherwise learned by myself, and that this is helping me to become a more rounded human being. Of course, at the same time, that TV was numbing my mind and creating a lot of other problems that I wanna get into here in a second. So, the first thing that you have to start to realize about this, uh, this TV that you're watching, if you're watching a lot of it, is that your mind is gonna trick you and it's gonna get you to come up with all sorts of rationalizations for why this TV that you're watching is good for you, right? And you're gonna have theories, you're gonna have all sorts of like counterpoints to make against even a suggestion that you should cut out TV entirely from your life. And that is what I'm suggesting here in this video is to cut it out entirely. I'm gonna make a couple of minor adjustments to, to that blanket statement, but generally what we're talking about here is cutting it out entirely. So how is television bad? We have to really build a case for it because if you, don't, if you don't buy into this case that I'm about to make, then you're not gonna quit. And see, the challenge with television is that it's everywhere. Anywhere you go, there's TVs. Even when you go nowadays to a restaurant, there's a flat screen TV on the wall. Even if you go to a hotel lobby, there's a flat screen TV. I even go to my apartment to get my mail at the mail center there, and there's a TV there playing movies and and news and that kind of stuff. And at the gym, you see television screens. So TV is everywhere. And in your house, you probably have many of them, and they're probably always playing. And so because of this, there's this like social, social and cultural momentum to be watching television. So you have to kind of uh, set some boundaries if you wanna stop. Because if you don't set these boundaries deliberately, consciously, then you're just gonna go along with the flow, you're gonna go with the crowd, you're gonna do what your friends are doing, you're gonna do what your family's doing, you're gonna do what, what people are doing at the gym or other places that you go to in public, and you're gonna watch that television. That's just what, what's gonna to happen to you. So we have to start to build this case in your mind. The first biggest thing that I see that's a big problem with television is how negative it makes you. It makes you extremely negative. It's funny because I watch the comments that are left on a lot of my videos on YouTube, and one of the things that I see there is that people will respond with all sorts of like limiting beliefs about life, or they'll, they'll espouse these like very deeply negative theories about how miserable and horrible and brutal life is. 
And I didn't realize this myself until I started getting into a lot of personal development, you know, going to seminars, watching a lot of products, listening to audio programs, and um, you know, smart people made smart points to me that I eventually caught on to, which is that a lot of the negativity that your worldview has is simply the result of the cultural conditioning that you're uh, inundated with through television as one of the primary sources. I can guarantee you that a lot of the people who espouse these very negative views about life, who think that life is very depressing or horrible, that there's a lot of murder and rape and drugs and violence happening in life, that uh, the only reason this is, if you think this way, is simply because you watch a lot of TV. If you didn't watch TV, if you didn't watch cable news, if you didn't listen to all the stuff that people are telling you uh, like that in the media, then there is no way that you would form a negative worldview like that in your own life just from personal experience. Not if you live in a first world country. If you live in a, in a reasonably good area in a first world country, there's no way you would come to that conclusion. But a lot of people are extremely negative in exactly those kinds of nice environments. First world country, nice neighborhood, but you've got this negative view of the world. Why? Because you're watching so much goddamn television. And the stuff that television is reporting to you is all biased. What is it biased towards? It's biased towards drama and like excitement and shock value. That's really what TV is about. That's what movies are about. That's what TV news is about. That's what a lot of shows and even documentaries, which you would think would be objective and uh, more even-minded, more scientific, a lot of them are also about shock value. Simply the things that they're choosing to focus on, even if they're reporting a, a case accurately, Simply the fact that they chose to focus on a rape, or a theft, or a robbery, or a war, or some sort of scam, or a Ponzi scheme, or some sort of government corruption, just because the news is choosing to focus on these things, that right there is already biasing you towards having this filter of the world as a negative place, which it's not at all. But you might think that because you watch so much television. A couple of other problems with TV. It numbs your mind. So even though you could say that through television you get to explore some of the world, you get to see what people are like through television, you get to learn about society through television, there are some redeeming qualities there. But the biggest problem is that you numb your mind as you're watching that TV, and what that does is it, it just like it, it drains your motivation to live your own kind of life. What I see happening, and this is something that I was experiencing for a long time, is that you start to get into this vicarious mode where you're living life through other people. You're living life through your reality TV stars that you watch, or through uh, an HBO show, or through even news or documentaries. That's how you're living life. You're not actually coming face to face with three dimensional life the way you would if you put down the remote and shut off your cable. But instead, you're, you're just like looking at this screen and you feel like you're living a real life, but your life is actually very two dimensional. And until you start to go out there and travel and build an amazing career for yourself and get into amazing relationships and make friends with cool people and start earning money and uh, creating success in, in the real world for yourself, then really you don't recognize how two-dimensional your life is. So the, num the mind-numbing effects are, are really pernicious. The next thing is that television promotes laziness. This really goes along with the mind-numbing effects. But the laziness comes about because it's so easy to just sit down and plug into an easy source of stimulation, the TV, right? You get home from work, you're a little bit tired, you just want to unwind, and so you plug in and you stayed plugged in. And when you do that day after day after day, week and month after month after month, and then go, it goes into years, what happens is that your, your willpower muscles just kind of drain, and it becomes very difficult to motivate yourself to go out there and do something big with your life that's actually going to require work and, and discipline and some challenge to it, right? For example, it's going to be very difficult for you to go out and, there and start your own business. Because when you do go to start that business, the first few obstacles that you're going to run into, which inevitably you will when you start a business, um, they're immediately going to make you think like, oh, why am I doing all this work when I could just go sit in front of the TV and watch a nice comfortable show that I like? Isn't that the easier, more comfortable life? Why don't I just go do that? Why am I bothering building this, this whole business thing? It's too much work, it takes too much discipline, there's all these challenges, all this frustration, all this stress, and then you say to yourself, ah, oh, you know what, uh, that can wait. And you put it on the back burner and you waste year after year after year watching more of this TV. So that's how it promotes laziness. 
The other thing that it does is it really kills your schedule. A lot of us these days, we're very busy. We live lives that are just inundated with all sorts of activity. Well, television is what it's doing is it's taking all that discretionary time that you have in your life, which is actually pretty limited because after work and after showering and going to the bathroom a couple times a day and getting a couple of lunches and dinners, pretty much your whole day is used up. You only have about four or five hours of discretionary time per day at, at most that you can use towards growing yourself or developing a business or improving in your career or doing something positive for your life creating something positive with your life. You only have so much of that per day. And every day that you waste an hour or two or even more watching television, that's precious time that you're wasting and that's destroying your schedule. It's really putting in a lot of filler in there that's just making you more frantic, more stressed, and more overwhelmed. Because you have these grand goals for your life, but you can't accomplish them with all your time is taken up by television. The other way that it's bad is that advertising is rampant through all of television, all of media. Basically, the media is built to accommodate advertising. Shows are literally designed so that they fit in with, with advertising. Um, this is a really, really dangerous thing, and you don't presently realize this if you've been watching TV your whole life. What I found is that once I weaned myself off of TV, then the other thing that I got really sensitive to is how pernicious the advertising is. I haven't watched cable television in, in years now probably three or four years. Um, and one of the things that I see when I'm at the gym, because we have TV monitors there, I try not to look at them, but sometimes I do, is whenever I see an advertisement, um, I'm very, very sensitive to it. It's almost freaky how sensitive I am because I'm simply not seeing them all the time. But you see them so much, if you're a regular TV watcher, that to you, you think like, oh, advertising, you know, that's just nothing. I'll just sit through it, or maybe I'll even you know, flip channels. But the fact is that you're still catching those ads. And those ads are dangerous because they're driving this kind of shallow consumerist desire in you. And they're also filling you up with just like this very stupid, mind-numbing groupthink. Right? TV makes you really soaked in groupthink. Which means that you're going to think like the general masses think. And when you think like the general masses think, then you expect easy results. You expect money and fame. And you think that some magic pill solution is going to come along and fix anything in your life. And just like other, other sorts of kind of group think like that. When you're buying into that, it's really difficult to then go do something extraordinary with your life. There's going to be such a huge disconnect there because just the philosophy of mainstream society is, is completely anti-mastery. It's anti-anything creating great with your life. It's anti-that, right? It's just... Um, living a really humdrum nine to, day kind of, nine to five kind of existence and then spending the rest of your day um, kind of entertaining yourself, being comfort mode, being stuck there, and then your life just stalls. That's what that's about. So that's very, very dangerous. And the last thing is that TV is really distracting you from your life purpose, right? What is it that you want to accomplish in your life? What's the impact that you want your short existence on this earth to actually create? You can't have a really serious life purpose and then to be spending even one or two hours a day watching television. There's such a huge disconnect between that. You really have to choose whether you want to have your life purpose and you want to be making a big difference contribution in the world or you're watching TV and doing all the stupid stuff that your friends do and all the stupid stuff that society tells you is easy to do. Right? Because having a purpose, working on that, having the kind of impact that you want, growing yourself in order to live into that purpose, to share your greatest gifts with the world, that's very challenging. That's difficult to do. That's why I do so much personal development is because I found that it's necessary in order for me to live out my greatest dreams and my greatest goals. But I can't do that. Literally, like right now, in my day, I'm always scrambling. I have so much stuff to do. If I was watching television, there's no way I could even accomplish a fraction of it all. Right? is just totally taking me off my course, breaking down my momentum, taking that motivation and willpower that I'm putting into my life purpose. If I'm watching TV, then TV just kind of sucks all that out from under me. So let's make a couple of distinctions here between television because I don't like using the blanket term TV. There's too many different mediums out there nowadays that some of them are actually good, some of them are really, really bad. So let's make some distinctions. I think the worst thing that you definitely need to cut out 
with no questions asked is cable television, right? Just cut out cable. If you have cable, if you have satellite, that needs to be cut. Why? Because the problem with cable is that it's always there, right? It's this like constant source of comfort you can keep coming back to and keep coming back to and keep coming back to. So it's when it's there at work or when it's there in your house or if you work at home and you have your own business, that's extremely, uh, extremely damaging to you, right? To always go to that source. So you want to cut that off so that even if you are watching movies here or there or you're catching glimpses of the TV at your friend's house or at the gym, um, you can't sit down and watch four hours of it, which you inevitably will do if you have cable TV in your house. So you got to like snip that cord and just cancel it. The next thing is DVDs. I think DVDs are actually okay. If you want to watch films, you want to watch movies, especially some of the classier films that are out there, go ahead and do that. I think that's fine. Just, you know, keep it, keep it moderate, keep it reasonable. If you want to watch a couple of movies a week, I think that's perfectly fine. If you want to like entertain yourself with one of your favorite movies or like a really high quality movie. I think that for movies, actually, you can gain good inspiration. You can also gain creative ideas if you're a creative type of person and your career revolves around that. You can get a lot of creative ideas from movies. They can also move you emotionally. They can stir you, which are some of my favorite movies are the ones that kind of do that. And they can also just give you kind of like an escape, especially if you're working really, really hard and you want to use a movie to, to get you some nice relaxation, to get your, your batteries recharged so you can go and hit hard, uh, hit hard at work again the next day. Uh, I think that's fine, just as long as you don't go overboard with that stuff. And what's nice with DVDs, and remember, this is DVDs or Blu-rays. This is different than something like Netflix. Because Netflix is, again, it's more like cable, and I'm going to get to Netflix in a second. But DVDs are okay because usually you don't have access to an infinite number of DVDs. You can't just sit there and watch four hours of DVDs most of the time. You've got to actually get in there, put it in your DVD player. So that's a different dynamic, right? Don't confuse this with Netflix. Let's, let's talk about Netflix and other streaming services too. So like Hulu, Amazon Video, other kinds of streaming services. I look at these as the same as cable TV. They're in the same negative category and this needs to be cut. So if you have subscriptions for Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, Prime, whatever that kind of stuff is, cancel and cut all that stuff. Because the problem is that it's too easy. It's there, right? It's just there and it's waiting to drain your attention in life. And it will trip you up and your willpower is not going to be strong enough to withhold from it all the time. So even though you can use that for a while, you can't use it all the time. And what you really want to avoid are those like four or five hour marathon sessions where you just sit and veg out and your mind goes totally numb. So get rid of those. Movie theaters. I think movie theaters are fine. If you go to the movies with your friends on Fridays, Saturdays, that kind of stuff, that's fine, usually because it's already an expensive activity, so you're not going to be doing it too often. Usually, you're not going to go more than once a week. Um, and you're actually there, you're going out with your friends, you're socializing, so that's a bit of a different thing. So movie theaters are not a problem. Uh, what is, though, a problem is YouTube, right? You're watching me on YouTube a lot of times, and I think that there's a distinction that needs to be made. You can, you can watch YouTube, but only watch it for educational material, not entertainment material. Because it's so easy to waste hours and hours of your life watching funny YouTube videos. And quite frankly, almost all the most popular channels on YouTube, virtually all of them, are just like the most stupid, mind-numbing, like lowbrow entertainment that you could possibly find. Why are they the most popular channels? Simply because that's what people are drawn to the easiest. That's the easiest thing to get drawn to because it's the most low consciousness thing. It's like the most lowest common denominator. And so if you're watching any of those kind of channels, unsubscribe from those channels, make a commit with yourself not to watch anything funny or stupid on YouTube. If you're gonna use YouTube, use it for educational type of information. Use it to watch documentaries, use it to watch lectures and uh, TED videos, like that kind of stuff. That's more or less okay. You don't want to go overboard with those either, but those are miles ahead of like the mind numbing shit that is 90% of what YouTube is. So watch out for that. Porn. I'm not really going to talk about porn in this video. I'll shoot a dedicated video about porn. Uh, the bottom line is, you know, don't be too obsessed with porn. I don't think that's a problem for most people because you just can't watch too much of it. It uh, ultimately, there's only so much of it you can watch. It's not going to waste hours and hours of your day. So my suggestion here is cut cable TV 
cut TV news, cut TV shows, cut stuff like Amazon and Netflix, all the streaming services, cut all of that stuff. Educational material is a different story. So I actually use television nowadays mostly for education. I'll use it to watch seminars, self-help products, lectures and, and, and like uh, really high quality documentaries. That kind of stuff I think is really, really good. So it's not about the screen, the TV screen itself. That's not what's kind of evil about television. The TV screen itself can be used for a lot of good stuff, right? I literally have a hard drives, terabytes of hard drives full of like amazing lectures from college professors and DVDs from uh, various seminars, like amazing self-help seminars, like that kind of stuff. That's life changing stuff for me. And if anything, I need to, to do is, is watch more of that. But that's a very different thing than the way that most people use television. I, fe I see very few people using television in this kind of educational way um, where I actually sit down, I watch, I pause, I take like detailed notes. It's really like studying. It's almost like being um, uh, enrolled in like an online college kind of course. So if you create that for yourself using your television or your, your internet or your computer, that's, that's perfectly fine. I think that's actually a really powerful way to grow yourself very quickly. And uh, YouTube could actually be part of that strategy. I mean, that's what I hope to do with my videos here is I hope that I can use these videos not to make you numb and to make you live vicariously through me and just to be feeding you with empty information. But ultimately, I hope that I give you all this information and you're actually going out there and implementing it on a daily basis, right? And eventually what's going to happen is that I hope that you actually wean yourself off of my videos. Eventually, you're going to wean yourself off and your life is going to be so extraordinary. It's going to be so three-dimensional that you're going to say, uh, screw that guy, Leo. I don't need his channel. I don't need his videos anymore. I've got this stuff figured out. I can go you know, to higher sources of information like books and, other and seminars and you know, mentors and my friends and, and stuff like that and like, learn really richly from that and live this extraordinary life in the 3D, not in the 2D. So that's kind of where I hope you ultimately get to. But it may take, take some time to do that. So how do you actually go about cutting television, cutting it out of your life? It's difficult. I remember the first time that I wanted to do this because I saw that it was important and I was trying to do it, but I kept cutting TV and then falling back off, cutting TV and falling back off. Um, and my biggest sticking point was that I was saying in my mind that wait, well, television, um, it's serving an important function in my life. Here's how my mind was thinking. It was saying, look, I work really hard. I run a business. I'm earning some good money, you know, I'm working more than eight hours a day sometimes, so I need a channel to relax. I need a way for, uh, for my mind to just kind of like mellow out, be chill, and recharge my batteries. And I'm really low on energy all the time, so TV helps me do that, helps me relax. Otherwise, I would say to myself, I'd be working all the time, and I would just burn myself out. And so this was the excuse that I was using to stay plugged into television for a long time. And I knew in the back of my mind that there might be other sources of relaxation out there for me, other ways to relax and recharge my batteries other than television. But I kept justifying in my mind and saying that, well, I tried some of this stuff like reading books and I tried some of this stuff like, um, you know, going out for a walk or, you know, doing these good kind of other activities and they just don't recharge me the way that TV does. And that's true because right now you're hooked to TV like a drug and you probably don't even realize it. So you have these withdrawal symptoms, and they're very real. I can remember right now my withdrawal symptoms about four years ago when I was getting off of cable. They were, they were, they were difficult. I would like tell myself, no, I'm not gonna do it, and then I would still turn the TV back on, right? And I would go maybe for a whole week not watching TV, and then I'd be so tired from my work and so like beat up after working so hard that I'd be like, oh, you know, I'm just gonna watch for an hour or two. And then I would sit down and I'd end up watching for five hours. And then I would feel guilty about it. So it's like this cycle that goes on and on. It's very similar to, to eating uh, junk food, right? If, you're in, if you have ever done emotional type of eating where you have a bad day and then you eat a lot and then you feel like you've like splurged and you just feel disgusting with yourself, that's what TV starts to feel like after a while. So here's how I did it. I think the most important thing is that you have to, you have to be honest with yourself and tell yourself that yes, there's going to be withdrawal symptoms and it's not going to be a clean and easy break at first. I think the biggest thing is to cut your streaming services, cut your cable. If you do that, 
then it's going to be difficult for you to engage in too much television already right there. But of course, you're still going to have these withdrawal symptoms and you're going to feel like, well, now I have nothing to do with, with this time. I have no way to relax. And, uh, and now you're going to feel stressed about it and you might feel like it's actually going to affect your performance and your work in a negative way. And it might for a short while. But I think the thing that really helps with that is to start to find activities to replace television, right? It's one thing to just cut out TV and then have no other plan for what you're going to do with that time. It's another thing to replace it with something else. And you have to be smart about what you replace it with. This is going to be a personal decision for everybody. So for everybody that's watching this, it's going to be a different decision depending on what your tastes and hobbies are. And I think that one of the dangers here is to, to kid yourself and to tell yourself, well, I'm just going to replace it with doing more work or I'm going to replace it with doing um, educational type of stuff or doing, doing personal development. You have, to, you have to understand why TV is in your life in the first place. TV is in your life because it helps you to unwind and to recharge your batteries. At least that's what it was for me. So if you're also in that position, then you have to find a suitable activity that's also going to re recharge your batteries and help you relax. Right? One of the problems that I made is I was telling myself, well, I'll just work a little bit more. That doesn't tend to work because if all you're doing is working for 12 hours a day, then the TV uh, was actually doing you good because too much work uh, just gets you too narrow-minded and eventually you, you do burn out. So the activities that I'm going to give you here, I'm going to give you a list of activities. Try to find the ones that you think are actually going to relax you and fill in that, that void that's going to be missing once you cut out your cable. So here's some of the stuff. And for some of you, this will seem like work, these activities. For others of you, it will seem like a joy. And also remember that what seems like work today, if you do it for a while, you do it for a few months, you do it for a year, it can actually become a joy and become a relaxation activity that used to be a work activity. So that's a, a further wrinkle that gets thrown in here. So here's the list. One is nonfiction books. Reading nonfiction books is amazing for you, amazing for your performance, and it's a lot better than reading fiction books. Fiction books can also have that kind of effect that TV has, so you could do it, but be careful. Don't get too drawn into that. Next is audio programs. I love listening to personal development audio programs. I have so many programs that I want to listen to and re-listen to again and again and again that really help me in my life. That's a really great way to take up your time, and it's also pretty relaxing to do that kind of stuff. You can just sit and passively listen. It doesn't always take that much effort. The next thing is educational videos. Like I talked about, educational YouTube videos. You can watch lectures and seminars and TED videos. There's a lot of stuff that's kind of on the border of education and entertainment. Something that's a little bit halfway. So it's not like very rigorous educational material because that tends to require a lot of brain processing power and that doesn't recharge your batteries, that drains your batteries. But you can find stuff that's kind of in between and use that to recharge your batteries and also at the same time build up your brain and personal development. So you can kind of be killing two birds with one stone there. Next is meditation. Meditation is huge. I meditate now for an hour every day. I actually feel like it saves me some time. Of course, it takes an hour out of my schedule every day, but I also get some other benefits. For example, I feel more calm and relaxed and I also feel like I need less sleep when I meditate. So don't dismiss that meditation, although it might sound boring and also might be stressful at first, that actually once you get into the habit of meditating, it can be a really pleasurable activity that you can just literally substitute one hour of TV time with one hour of meditation time and uh, feel very refreshed and relaxed doing that. Another really simple activity that you could replace TV with is napping. This was actually really practical for me. I always felt guilty about napping. And my mind was always telling me, well, if I'm napping, then I'm sleeping too much, I'm being lazy, I'm not working hard enough. Um, actually, what I've discovered in about the last year or two is that napping is awesome. And there's no need to feel guilty about it. And in fact, if you're working really hard, then you're probably going to want to take a, a nap sometime later in the day because you're just exhausting your mental resources so much if you're working a lot. So for me, I usually do take about a 30 to 60 minute nap. Uh, in the evening because then it just like recharges me for another run at the work that I'm doing. And one big thing with naps that I discovered is that um, I kind of had this almost like uh, socially conditioned negativity about naps. And one of the things that I always felt in my life that I had to be running around and like doing stuff actively, right? And TV I thought was kind of like also like an, a little act active activity. I actually put naps under TV 
kind of on, on the hierarchy of, of like important activities in my life, naps would be underneath TV. But what I discovered now is that like when you take naps and you just kind of allow yourself to like relax and be a little bit more chill with your schedule, not always needing to be filling your schedule to the brim with activity, then that's actually a really powerful way to promote your personal development, recharge your batteries, and just like get that happiness and calmness that you ultimately want, right? You don't want to be frantic all the time. You want to start creating activities in your life that will get you more of that peace. And I find that naps are really good for that. And uh, the biggest thing in my mind was that I had to kind of condition myself to say, oh, wait a minute, naps are actually like a, a very healthy form of relaxation, right? In fact, maybe they're one of the most healthiest. I would probably put naps and meditation as the top two healthiest ways to just relax yourself and unwind. Um, along with that is just simply doing nothing. Literally like just sitting around and just kind of like enjoying the space that you're sitting in and like doing nothing. Even if it's only for 10 or 20 minutes. That can be a really good way to slow yourself down and also just kind of relax yourself because during your workday you're always like trying to get stuff done, everything is very goal oriented. And if you just kind of like sit down and have no goals whatsoever, that can be uh, a good way to recharge your batteries in and of itself. Other activities, taking walks, spending more time with your pet, if you have a cat or a dog, playing with your cat or dog more. Kids, if you, have, if you have kids, spending more time with your kids, of course, is a great thing to do. It'll help you, it helps them. Going out. A lot of people nowadays are so hooked into media, TV, internet, that they don't leave their houses. I know I was like that. I'm still kind of like that. Uh, I, have to, I have to force myself to go out. Go out to bars, go out to clubs, meet with friends, go to the movies, that kind of stuff. Do social events. So uh, that can be a really, really great way to replace your TV. And that's a really good thing because uh, when you're going out with your friends or you're going out to a bar or a club, your mind just is to totally taken totally off of television. And so I find that that's a really good uh, substitute because you're never going to be tempted to go back to TV if you're in a, in a stimulating environment like a, like a nightclub or a bar. Gym. If you don't work out, then spending more time at the gym. Actually, what's also cool is that when you reduce your TV intake, is that you can also up the amount of time you spend at the gym. And I oftentimes find that actually spending more time at the gym than I normally would want to spend can actually be better because you kind of like slow yourself down. You give yourself more time to enjoy the actual exercises that you're doing. You can do them a little bit slower and you can kind of like relax and, and know that you have actually a couple of hours to get through your whole routine. You don't need to be anywhere. So I find that, that that actually makes the gym more enjoyable is when you have a little bit more time, you're not always like working towards a clock at the gym because that can be stressful. Next is uh, spending more time with your friends just in a coffee shop or wherever you want to meet them on the phone, talking, chatting, um, you know, talking about whatever kind of life stuff you want to talk about. If they're your great friends, then you probably enjoy having deep conversations with them and that can be a really great, great way to relax, unwind from work and also learn stuff in the process. Because if you have smart friends that are very positive, they're doing a lot of stuff in their life, they're very ambitious, you can learn a lot from them just by sitting and talking with them for an hour or two. Next, listening to music. That's another great activity that you can replace. Uh, I think that listening to music is not that damaging to your psyche or it doesn't make you that lazy. Um, maybe you can overdo it, but I find that generally listening to music um, isn't too bad. So that's a good way to relax and uh, it's also kind of similar to TV, so that might be a smoother transition for you than doing something like replacing TV with meditation. Uh, another thing that I like is, I've been really getting into it lately, is self-hypnosis audios. There's a lot of audio programs on self-hypnosis that you can buy, and literally what these are, they're, they're just like these guided hypnosis sessions. Uh, it's just like a, a voice talking, it's usually soothing, calming, and you can find different hypnosis audios on different stuff like building your confidence or improving your uh, success with the opposite sex, or career, money, really anything, or just generally relaxing and stress reducing type of um, hypnotic audios. And just like sit back, put your headphones on and listen to it for half an hour or an hour. They're going to help you visualize cool stuff and that really promotes your personal growth. You can do a lot of active personal development that way, but it's also like extremely relaxing and it feels extremely good. Uh, I've really been getting into that lately. And the last one that I'm going to throw out there is cooking. Cooking is a really great activity. I find that you can use it to, at the same time, build a valuable life skill. If you're a guy cooking with girls, that's a really hot commodity. Girls will love you for that. If you're a girl learning how to cook, guys love that too. So really both sexes love for the opposite sex to know how to cook. And you can also couple that with the nutrition 
that you should be improving in your life, right? Eating more nutritiously, eating more whole foods, eating more raw foods, more vegetable-based foods. So cooking is, is good for you on that level too. So you're killing kind of multiple birds with one stone. And uh, also I find that it can be relaxing. Once you learn some of the recipes and stuff, then you can just kind of like go do your thing. Even the process of going to the grocery store and buying groceries, that can also just be kind of a, a, like a relaxing process. And I find that it's very healthy, very healthy process. Uh, so that's a list. There's a lot of stuff here. And I'm sure you can come up with a, a much larger list given your specific tastes and hobbies and preferences and where you live and all the options that are or are not available to you. So sit down, pick one or two or three things that sound like a really good substitute for TV that will help to fulfill that role that TV is playing in your life. I think that's the critical piece here. Make sure that the role that TV plays is also filled by one of these activities that you choose. Don't choose something that's totally, uh, totally out there, something that would not be a candidate as to replace TV. And really, the action item for you from this video is really simple. I want you to cancel your cable, cancel it right now. Don't wait till the end of the month because you're going to forget. Don't wait till the end of the billing cycle. Call them right now and just cancel it. Cancel your Netflix, cancel your Hulu, cancel your Amazon TV, cancel any kind of streaming services that you have that give you really easy access to television. Cancel all that stuff. Don't throw your television out because you'll be able to use it for other good stuff like educational videos and the occasional DVD. So you don't need to get rid of your television. Just snip that cable. And I want you to commit to a 30-day challenge. This is how I started to wean myself off television when I got really serious, is I committed to a 30-day challenge. No TV for 30 days straight. And when, I, when you do this challenge, I would recommend really going cold turkey. So I would recommend cutting off cable TV, all your Netflix, all that stuff, obviously. But I would even recommend that you don't go to movie theaters. You don't do any DVDs or movies of any kind. You don't even look at the TV monitors at your gym when you're exercising. You just kind of like look away. Do that for 30 days straight. What you're going to find is if you do that for 30 days straight, you're going to get through some of those withdrawal symptoms. And after 30 days, you're not going to be thirsting for TV as much. And if you replace TV with some of these other activities, like meditation or naps or cooking or listening to music, then uh, that substitution is going to take place. And you're not going to have that same drive to go back anymore. And once you're done with those 30 days, see how you feel. And if you're feeling good, just keep it going. Keep it going as long as you can. Cutting that cable is going to help you a lot. Uh, and what's going to happen is that even after those 30 days, you still might feel like you want to go back to TV. You might backslide a bit. What I found is that it really takes about six months to 12 months of no TV to really convince your mind of the fact that you don't need it at all. If you told me three years ago or four years ago when I was in the process of breaking this TV watching cycle in myself, if you told me that I would be really happy standing right here right now and not watching any TV in my life for months on end, I would be like, no way. I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that and maintain my performance at work. That's what I would say. But now I found so many other enriching activities in my life that I would rather be doing than television that I don't even think about it. It's a pretty amazing shift and it just shows you how hooked your brain can get on stuff because you can get so hooked that you don't even realize how hooked you were the whole time. And uh, this is going to improve your mood. This is going to improve your negative thinking. This is going to remove some of your negative beliefs or at least keep you from uh, being conditioned with even more negative beliefs. It's going to take you out of that consumer culture that the TV ads are always trying to feed you. And it's going to free up your schedule and it's going to free up your motivation and your, your mental resources so that you can be a little bit higher consciousness and then go out there and uh, start creating that amazing life that you want to create if you're watching my videos and you're subscribed to this channel. All right, so go ahead and do that. I think this is one of the most important things that you can do in your life. It's like a really low-hanging fruit. If you watch a lot of TV, cut that stuff out. All righty, I'm signing off. This is Leo for actualize.org. Go ahead and post me your comments down below. Let me know what you guys think about this and what your success stories uh, are like. Also, please like this video. Click the like button for me. Share it with a friend. Post it on Facebook so that this video can spread. We want more people creating extraordinary lives, less people watching television. And finally, 
come and check out my newsletter at actualize.org. This is the newsletter. It's a free newsletter. I release videos on a weekly basis, and all my videos are really here to cut through all the bullshit. All the bullshit that the media is feeding you, stuff that your, uh, your parents and your friends are telling you that's keeping you stuck in life. I want to cut through all that stuff. I want to give you the mindsets that you practically need to really create the feelings that you want in your life, the success that you want in your life. It's possible for you to have a life that's very passionate in your career, in your relationships, and where you're thriving on literally every category of your life and you feel like you're a movie star, right? You feel like you're that amazing, like uh, uh, living that amazing dream that you would imagine only somebody in a magazine or on TV living. You can have that but you have to work towards it. And one of the first things you gotta do is cut off that TV, but then um, you know, keep building yourself up week after week after week after week, and slowly you can get yourself there. And I'm really excited about sharing the, the best, most practical mindsets that I've discovered that are gonna help you to do that. So sign up and you'll be getting that stuff for free.